Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams here with our Sunday message, our last message for the month of February, February 23rd. Our theme for the year is Enter God's Rest, Time for R&R, Release and Renewal and Restoration. And we're, we're finishing up our message called Are You Too Sleepy to Pray? And the, the subtopic is Will He Find You Sleeping? We're kind of picking up where we left off last week. If you would like to know more about the ministry and our upcoming events or schedule, you can go to our website, williamsinnovativenetwork.webley.com. Again, that's williamsinnovativenetwork, one word, dot webley.com. And our scriptural theme for the year is found in Titus 3, verse 4 through 6, and it reads, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of His righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saves us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so today I'm reading from Matthew, the 26th chapter, the 43rd through the 46th verse. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word, for it is life-giving. It is what we find for, for to help us to grow, to teach us, to encourage us, and to protect us, Lord, from the 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 tricks of the enemy. So, Father, we just ask that you would help us as we go through your word today. Give us the encouragement we need so that we can stand strong for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And it reads, When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. And so we see Jesus. He asked him about being asleep and he finds them sleeping a second time. And so the second time Jesus returns, he finds his disciples sleepy because their eyes are heavy. They do not have the ability to keep their eyes open. How great the despair is in the church when the people of God are not able to keep their eyes open to the needs around them. And no, I'm not talking about your physical eyes. I'm talking about your spiritual eyes, your ability to discern. Jesus warns them that the time, you know, Jesus warned them the first time. He told them to watch and pray. So in other words, be alert. Keep your eyes focused on the right things. Yet the disciples did not hear or heed Jesus' warning. They did not keep focused because the eyes were too heavy. This time, Jesus spoke no warning to them. He only left them. And so I've heard people do things and say, well, it must be okay because God isn't speaking to me that is wrong. Could it be that he has already given you the warning, but because of the heaviness of your eyes, you fell asleep. He came, found you not in your rightful place. So instead of speaking, he silently moved away and left you where you were. Lord, help us as your people not to miss the warnings so that we will see the needs and we will be in our rightful places. See, are you still sleeping? Not just are you asleep, but are you still sleeping? When Jesus returned after the third time he went to pray, he comes back and tells the disciples, are you still sleeping? The hour is now. In essence, what Jesus is telling them is you've missed the opportunity to pray. What you were sent to pray about is now here. See, it's too late. It is upon us. How many times have we been asked to pray for something, but we became sleepy and forgot to pray or forgot to watch what is coming our way? We could then be, be hearing Jesus telling us, are you still sleepy? Well, get up now. Because what you were supposed to be praying for is now here. How startled can that be to find yourself awakened from sleep right in the middle of a situation? I believe that is why Jesus wants us to be watchful and pray. Have our eyes focused on the right things, not hidden behind the lids of our eyes, unable to see anything. So in other words, Jesus is calling us to have spiritual eyesight that is always focused on the things of God. You know, there's a section in a book that I wrote, I saw the chicken is out of the coop. And it talks about the ease, the eagle's eyelid, and it's quite interesting. The eagle's eyelid is translucent. So even when the eagle blinks, it can still see. There isn't anything that hinders its ability to see. And God desires us like this spiritually 
to have nothing that hinders our ability to see what's going on around us in a spiritual sense. Yet if we allow heavy eyelids to get in the way, we find ourselves hindered. So what is a heavy heavy eyelid? Well, anything that causes you to become tired in your ability to pray, anything that makes you focus, makes your focus turn from your assignment in God to your own comforts and desires, anything that will stop you or make you dull of hearing God's instructions for your lives, that's a heavy eyelid. See, Jesus warns them to watch because he wants them to understand the enemy is approaching. And it's true for us today, just as um, Judas was coming and they were coming to, to take Jesus away. Jesus wants us to be aware that our enemy is approaching, but we can't see him if our eyes are closed. And so I just simply today is am coming to remind you that Jesus wants us to be watchful and to pray. Watchful of how the enemy desires to weaken us and catch us off guard and unprepared. Jesus wants us to be ready to pray not, not only for our own needs, our own Gethsemane-like situation, but to be ready to pray for others. So we'll find ourselves um, invited into these situations to pray or or sometimes to press in further as Peter, James, and John were, whatever we find ourselves, we we have to let it be known that, I mean, let me let it be known that we don't want to find ourselves too sleepy to pray. We don't want to find our eyelids so heavy that we can't keep them up. You know, think about it. When you become super sleepy, even if somebody's talking, whatever, your eyelids close, you are oblivious to what they can be doing. You're oblivious to what they can be saying. You don't see, you don't hear. But that's not what God wants us to be spiritually. He doesn't want us sleep on the job. If he's called us to an assignment then he is, and telling us to be watchful and to pray, then we have to earnestly seek in and press in and not be a spiritually dull and not so that we don't hear what's approaching us, that we don't find ourselves waking up. Now we're in the midst of situations. Think about it. I know it's happened to you. It's happened to me if we're honest. There have been times where I felt like God was trying to tell me to prepare for something, but I wasn't hearing him. I was sleepy in a sense. My eyelids were closed. My ability to see wasn't there. Then all of a sudden, I find myself in the middle of this situation going, oh, this is what God was trying to prepare me for. This is what I fell asleep on. This is what I miss praying for. And not only for my own situation, but I've done that. And I, it's been other situations early in my Christian walk where God said, pray for somebody. And I said, okay. And, you know, life came and I got busy and I'd see him again and go, oh yeah, the Lord said pray. And I'd remember for that moment and then I'd forget. And I did that for a particular situation a couple of times. And I almost feel like the Lord just came and popped me upside the head. It's like, Jewel. And, and really, it, he was kind of asking me this question. Are you still sleeping? Do you not see? The time is here. The time is now. And then certain things were revealed. And I, and I, and I became heavy in my heart because I realized, wow, if God was asking me to pray, he wanted to intervene in this situation. We don't have to understand the why and the how of things because all I know was if he had told me to pray, I was supposed to pray. There was a purpose of me joining in prayer with not maybe just myself, but others so that God could have access and control over that situation, that he would be able to step into the lives of these individuals. Now, we're not going to get into a theological debate because God is all knowing and he can do whatever he wants. But why he allows us to partner with him in prayer, I can't give you the answer to that. That's what he wants to do. He wants to give us the ability to pray and, and to talk to him. And our prayer life then has, has a, a, an effect on the things going on around us. Why he gives us that ability? That's what he desires to do. That's all I can say on that. But the whole point is you and I have to then make sure that we're holding ourselves accountable and responsible to doing what God has called us to, to do. And so the question is, are you too sleepy to pray? 
Will he find you sleeping? Well, my prayer is, Lord, I don't want to ever be found asleep, sleeping on the job. I don't want to ever be found sleep when you've given me an assignment to pray for somebody. I don't want to ever find myself waking up in the midst of the situation, either myself or for somebody else where I didn't pray. And, and, and because part of prayer is not just so that we can see the response. Part of prayer is for you to receive from God the wisdom on what to do. That keeps you from waking up going, whoa, I'm in the midst of the situation. Because God will give you the revelation and the understanding of what it is you're getting ready to face. So I pray that we do not find ourselves asleep. That we find ourselves in our rightful places. Praying as God has called us to pray. So that when, when we are in our Gethsemane-like situations or others in their Gethsemane-like situations, we're there pressing in so that God can get the glory out of the situation. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you. And I pray, Lord God, for your people that you would help us, Lord God, to be in our rightful places, that we will not find ourselves asleep and unprepared for the for the demands that are uh, that are coming against us, that we're ready to face head on those situations and the things that come against us from our adversary, the enemy of our soul. But Lord God, I pray and ask that you would help each person, whether they're in the place of a Gethsemane-like situation or if they're praying for somebody else that's in that type of situation. Father, we just ask that you would glorify yourself in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.